Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina, and welcome to another episode of our Sunday Night Live Q&A Fishing Show. Appreciate you tuning in and joining us tonight on this Sunday Night Live stream show on January 2nd, 2022. Got to get in the habit of 2022, writing it, saying it, it is tricky. Uh, I've been struggling the last couple of days, so uh, definitely getting adjusted to the new year. Hopefully you guys are too. And uh, looking forward to tonight's show. We got a ton of great photos to show you guys because we missed you last week. Last week was uh, Christmas weekend. We took a weekend off, and because of that, we've got even more photos to show you. Uh, ended gag grouper season with a bang, and now we've got red grouper season open and uh, we're ready and raring to go. Rick Rogers, appreciate you, man. Terry Feather, Willie Solowski, thank you so much. Rick with those thousand stars. A shout out to Colorado. Hopefully you're doing all right dodging them fires. But I know you're on the way to see us soon. So getting out of uh, Colorado and uh, those cold temperatures. So see you soon. Uh, Thomas James from Columbus, Ohio. What's going on, man? Mike New, see you January 9th. Barb Jones from Southern Illinois. Thanks for watching. Susan, how are you? Hope you and Philip are doing well. LaShonda from St. Pete. Hey, appreciate you all tuning in and joining us, like I was saying. And I uh, want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends at Gator Gyms. Uh, these shows are brought to you by Gator Gyms Tackle at 3301 Pinellas Point Drive South. If you haven't checked out Gator Gym's Tackle, exit 16 off Interstate 275 right there uh, by Maximo and O'Neill's Marina. Definitely check them out. They have a ton of tackle and really good people. Christine, appreciate those stars. Cheyenne Blasek, appreciate those stars. Thank you so much. Darren Dees, you as well. Also, uh, don't forget to comment and let us know where you're watching from. Uh, that is enters you for a chance to win those free trips we're giving away. We're giving away over $700 in free fishing trips. All you have to do is watch the show and stay tuned in live. You can't just pop in, comment once, and pop out. you got to actually watch the show live in order to be eligible to win those free trips. So make sure you stay tuned. Comment. Tell us where you're watching from. Don't forget to give the video a like for us. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're watching on Instagram, don't forget to double tap for us. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Even if you're not watching on YouTube, Later on tonight after the show, check out our YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe for us. Craig Robinson, appreciate those 200 stars, buddy. Uh, also on Instagram, if you're watching on Instagram, you can go to Instagram.com and then navigate to Hubbard's Marina and you can turn your phone sideways and see the whole screen. If you're watching on the Instagram app, you can't see the whole screen, unfortunately. You can't turn your phone sideways, so... Remember, if you go to your phone's browser and go to Instagram.com and navigate to Hubbard's Marina there, that's how you can see the full screen while you're watching on Instagram. Robert Holshauser, appreciate those thousand stars, buddy. Jim Evans, what's up, my man? Appreciate you tuning in, man, and uh, so sorry for your loss, man. Appreciate you watching. Um, also, don't forget, if you want to win those free trips, you do have to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. Comment one time, that enters you for a chance to win, then continue to watch live. If you're picked as a lucky winner, you have to text us at that phone number right there within about five minutes to be uh, claiming that free trip and eligible to uh, get that free trip certificate mailed to you. So definitely make sure... If you want to win, you got to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. And then if you're picked as a lucky winner, you got to text us at that phone number within five minutes to prove you're watching live. So stay tuned and uh, sit back, relax, grab a drink, and get ready for a good show. With that, let's get into some of these photos. We're going to first show you our photos from our Egmont Key adventure recently. As some of you guys know, we are working with a professional film company, and uh, they have been uh, 
coming out with us on our dolphin tours, on our Egmont trips, on our island trips, on our fishing trips, and uh, doing a bunch of different stuff. So wanted to showcase for you guys real quick some of the photos from our recent Egmont Key adventure. My sister Tara and her friends uh, went out there. My sister Tara is actually involved in a business called On The Go. She started it um, my sister Tara is totally different from me. So instead of like fishing and running businesses, she like travels and does yoga and she's not into firearms. It's super weird. I don't know if we're even related, but, uh, she goes out to Egmont key and shell key and, uh, shares her business with, uh, guests and her friends. So this is a yoga retreat, uh, kind of a, what do they call them? Day treats. So this was from a day treat at Egmont key. Uh, with her and her group of friends. So check it out. Pretty cool. Showcases the island and uh, some cool stuff that you can do out at Egmont Key. And we do offer other things besides fishing. Believe it or not, we take you to the island. We do dolphin tours. That's my sister, Tara. Uh, we do island trips, dolphin tours, sunset cruises. Uh, we do yoga retreats, embarrassingly enough. No, I'm just kidding. Yoga is actually pretty cool. I've really tried to say that it's weird that I'm not into it but I tried it my wife and I got a peloton which is a, this is a total rabbit trail but the peloton is uh, got some yoga classes on it and I may or may not have tried a yoga class and that is not easy <laughs> it is it is not if you could picture me at home in my living room trying to follow along with a professional yoga instructor you would probably be as entertained as my wife was trying to watch me do it. <laughs> so no rear naked dogs for you? Dude, it was, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was ugly, Josh. It was real ugly. But it was awesome because uh, I have a lot of back pain and hip pain, and it definitely helped me a lot. So uh, yoga, is, it's not all bad. And uh, this is a little bit about Egmont Key and just all the cool stuff you can see. Is that a Disney logo? We're going to get a cease and desist letter on that. That's pretty cool. Huh. That's a lucky shell find. Uh, Egmont Key is home to a lighthouse. It is a working lighthouse. And uh, definitely pretty cool adventures out there at Egmont Key. We also offer snorkeling while you're out at the island with us. Our Egmont Key Ferry offers snorkeling on the weekdays, not on weekends. Uh, and we only offer that in the spring and summer. This time of year, December, January, February, we don't offer snorkeling. People get really upset. They come down in the middle of December and they want to go snorkeling when water temperatures are in the low 70s. We don't snorkel when you can get hypothermia out at the, out at the snorkel site, unfortunately. Um, that's a manatee, not a shark, by the way, that previous photo. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> There's an up-close view of the lighthouse, and uh, that's all our photos of Egmont Key. I know it has nothing to do with fishing, but uh, I wanted to show you guys that and just let you know. We do offer other things besides just fishing. I thought it was pretty cool. You guys might have been interested, might have enjoyed the photos a little bit. So a quick, quick detour from our uh, fishing photos. Now, back to fishing. Inshore, we've been seeing those mackerels still. Mackerel is definitely still around, which is surprising for December, but water temperatures are still pretty warm. Um, but that could change over the course of the next seven, eight days. We're going to be talking about the weather here shortly, and uh, you'll know what I mean. But definitely still some mackerel around right now, especially early mornings around those fishing piers and around deeper edges of the flats. A lot of redfish action, a lot of mullet moving around, and those redfish are following them. We're finding a lot of redfish on those mangrove shorelines at high tides, those oyster bars at high tides, low tides, finding them on those potholes and cuts in edges of the flats. Definitely a good time for those redfish. Slow moving, soft plastics, live shrimp, even greenbacks, small pinfish, all good options. But slow moving, soft plastics are definitely kind of king for those redfish. Seen a lot of sheep's head around the area, virtually any dock, bridge, pier, jetty, anything that has growth is holding those sheep's head. 
Snook action is going pretty good. When the water warms up, we see a lot of them in the passes in the early morning and through the night on bridge lights, dock lights. During the day, even still uh, some snook in the passes. But a majority of those fish are definitely in the back bay area around those flats, islands, residential dock lines becoming better and better spots, especially as water temperatures drop. Residential dock lines, those points of those residential canals become hot spots. Seeing a lot of trout action on those edges, those potholes, those cuts, deeper sandy drop-offs, good places to look for those trout as well. We're also seeing pompano uh, on the beaches around those jetties, sandier passes. We're seeing some flounder mixed in with them as well. Triple tail still around, a lot of good inshore action. And uh, with that, we're going to work our way near shore. Uh, we've been seeing some of those gag grouper near shore as we ended gag grouper season. Our 12-hour night snapper caught a couple keeper gags. Hogfish bite has been pretty steady. Slowed down a little bit for us, got a little picky, uh, but still seeing some of those hogfish at the end of gag grouper season. And uh, I have a feeling it'll pick up more for us as we get to focus on them more as gag grouper have closed, and we're going to be hunting those red grouper and hogfish over those large areas of hard bottom. Mangrove snapper have been pretty steady. A little hit and miss near shore. Better the deeper we go, but definitely seeing some decent ones near shore. And another keeper gag. There's a nice mangrove. Hogfish have been just going and going and going. We're seeing most of those hogfish on our 10-hour trips. There's a random photo of the Flying Hub 2. In our near shore photos, my bad. <laughs> it's a beautiful boat, though. I love it. That and, was from uh, the flyby. It was a flyby, yeah. It w- we did our supporters trip, uh, which was a while ago, uh, but we just got the photos from that, and it's basically what we were catching at the end of December anyway. And uh, the Flying Hub 2 did a buzz by since we had the camera guy on board. And uh, the supporters group, if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely think about joining that. It's growing. It's a lot of fun. Gives you access to the private supporters page. You get kind of more behind the scenes info and more one-on-one communication. You can become a supporter by clicking that button at the top of our Facebook page. After the show, just go to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook. You'll see a become a supporter button. You can click that, follow the steps. That'll get you into the supporters club. You'll have private access to that private group And that's where we do our after show every week. So you get a private after show after our live show. You get kind of more one-on-one stuff in that after show. And then also through the week, you get kind of more one-on-one communication. We post schedules. You'll know more information. And you get up-to-date announcements and stuff. You know everything first. You get to see everything first in the supporters group. So definitely check it out. It's only $4.99 a month. So less than a cup of coffee a day, and you get a private after show every week and more. So pretty worth it in my mind. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Now, we're going to work our way offshore, show you guys what we've been catching in the deep water. Uh, Joey Quinlan, appreciate those stars. D. Beers, Willie Solowski, appreciate you guys. I know a lot of other people were sending stars, too, while we were going through photos. Just... uh, trying to get through the photos as quick as we can. So we have time for your questions. We've got a lot of photos tonight. So let's see our offshore photos. Josh, are they queued up, ready to rock and roll? So offshore, big mangroves. Gag grouper season ended with a bang, and red grouper season has kicked off. So gag groupers have closed, but red groupers are now open. So don't worry, still plenty of grouper to catch. We've got red grouper, scamp grouper, mangroves, big porgies to target. So we still have plenty of fish to catch. Grouper season is not closed. Red grouper are open. Scamp grouper are open. Strawberry grouper are open. We're seeing big mangroves, porgies, almacos, vermilions. Lots of fish out there to be had and to be caught, guys. I absolutely detest when I hear people say, oh, well, I'll see you in June when grouper season opens back up. There's a lot of grouper besides just gag grouper. It's crazy. So lane snapper are open, red groupers open. There's a lot of fish to be had out there. And then look at that. I skipped over it. We caught a mahi, a mahi-mahi randomly. Uh, End of December. Pretty crazy. 
So you never know what you're going to catch out there in deep water. The scamp grouper are thick. And as we target those red grouper offshore and deep water on those deep water potholes, there's a lot of big scamp mixed in with them. We see a solid mangrove snapper bite in January. And loads are lighter. This weekend's 39 hour has less than 30 people on it. So we went from sold out trips at the end of gag grouper season to half full, 60% full. So definitely lighter loads, less people, great time to get out there on the water. Blackfin tuna biting well too. We're seeing a couple wahoo being caught off our coastline. It was a stellar end of gag grouper season. Don't get me wrong. I definitely am not ignoring the gags here, guys, but I want to make sure we emphasize the fact that there's still fish to catch. So, beautiful scamp grouper. Oh, some of these photos are duplicated. My bad. But you get the picture. The fishing has been good and remains to remains really good for us, too. And uh, look at that throwback. Someone posted this in a Facebook group I'm a part of, and I stole it just because uh, it was cool. And it was obviously at Hubbard's Pier, fishing local water since 1928, baby. Almost 100 years. Almost 100 years and four family generations. Also, don't forget, if you are a guide or you know a guide, someone who makes money, Taking people on the water, whether they're fishing, cruising, dolphin tours, eco tours, whatever. Someone who makes money on the water, send them the information about our January 19th Florida Guides Association meeting. That's going to be held at Gator Gym's Tackle January 19th at 6.30 p.m. Open to any Florida guide. Anybody who makes money taking somebody on the water. you got to be licensed, insured. All that good stuff. Uh, But if you are a guide, make sure you are there or you tell your guide friends about it. Um, I know there's more photos. It's not let me switch, though, Josh. Maybe I'm out of photos. Huh. Weird. But you guys get the idea. Basically wanted to make sure you knew about that meeting. And, uh, oh, can you uh, go back to that Word document? This is the last thing I wanted to talk about, and then we'll transition into questions uh so we have uh can you make that full screen for me josh so uh want to share this with everybody i think it's f11 right uh weird well we have a take a vet fishing event so take a vet fishing is a new group that we're working with at Hubbard's Marina. And uh, it is a 501c3 charitable organization. And they have an event coming up January 22nd uh, at Hubbard's Marina. And it is completely free to veterans. So you can come out and get a free breakfast. Uh, There's a little ceremony event at the local Johns Pass VFW. And then we're doing an afternoon five-hour half day. It's free breakfast and fishing if you are a veteran. So call Rob at this phone number if you are interested in participating. That is on January 22nd. January 22nd, free breakfast and a free fishing trip if you are a veteran. So call Rob and join us for the Take a Vet fishing event again take a vet fishing.org hopefully you can join us for that event if you are a veteran and shout out to our veterans land of the free because of the brave so appreciate you guys men and women uh service veterans uh for making what we do here possible and uh definitely excited about that event and our uh, opportunity to give back all right so With that, let's talk about weather. Actually, before we get into weather, let's do our first free trip of the night. Let's give away our five-hour half day for two guests. Five-hour half day for two guests. Let's see who won a five-hour half day for two guests. That is a $150 value in 2022. The five-hour half day is $75 a person. Stuart Mizari. 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 I'm going to go with Mizari. From Orlando. 
Congrats, Stuart. Appreciate you for watching. You just won a five-hour half day for two guests. You got to text us at that phone number within five minutes or less your full home address to prove you're watching live. So text us quickly at that phone number to claim your free trip. All right. So with that, we're going to talk a little bit about weather. Uh, we have right now a big cold front bearing down on the area. It probably already went through. Uh, going to get a little nasty tonight and through tomorrow. And uh, then we are going to have some windy conditions through tomorrow and into Tuesday. It's going to calm down slowly. Tuesday will get nicer. Wednesday will be better. Thursday is best. Then we have another big front looking like it's going to be coming through Friday mid-morning-ish. Going to get a little nasty there Friday afternoon and through Saturday. Then it clears up a little bit Sunday, gets nice again Monday, and then another cold front. So we are finally into winter here in Florida. We are just a little bit behind the rest of the country, and uh, we're finally starting to get those cold fronts in a little bit more of a pattern. So like every three to four days, it seems like, at least for the next seven to nine days, we're going to get that pattern. So you get a bad front like we're getting tonight, tomorrow, and then you're going to get weather calming down, clearing up, and then all of a sudden you get another front. So you want to time your trips around these fronts. So the best day to go fishing is this Thursday. If you don't have Thursday available, Wednesday looks pretty good too, especially offshore. So Wednesday's extreme trip, best option this coming week. Thursday's 10-hour all day, second best option. Or the five-hour half days, Wednesday or Thursday. Or maybe the 39-hour trip, I don't know, Friday, could get, could get messed up because of that front. But definitely Wednesday's 12-hour extreme, I'd book that if I was you. Thursday's 10-hour trip. Wednesday, Thursdays, five-hour trips. Those would be the days you'd want to get out in the water. If you are if you or someone you know is into shelling, if you want to go get some awesome shells, shark's teeth, I'd go out to Egmont Key uh, Tuesday. Tuesday's Egmont Key, Shell Key Ferry, killer shells right behind a really rough day. That's when like people who own shell shops and shark's teeth emporiums, that's when they go out there and get them and collect them along the beach behind really bad weather. So Tuesday morning, whoever's out there earliest before anybody else is going to get the most cool shells. So if you're a sheller, Tuesday morning, Egmont Key, Shell Key Ferry, book it. All right. So uh, we talked a little bit about weather. We uh, showed you guys what we've been catching. Let's get into some questions. Let's see what you guys want to talk about. And with that, um, how do I cancel my reservation? You can call us. Got a call to cancel reservations. You can't cancel a reservation via text message, via email, any other way, because we want to know, do you want to cancel and refund? Do you want to cancel and transfer? Do you want to transfer to another day, rebook? Do you want your money back? Do you want a gift card? Do you want to do this? What spot do you want on your next trip? If you do want to rebook, do you want pinfish? Do you want parking? There's too many questions. You can't do that via email or via text message. So call us. Save yourself the headache. Save us the headache. You can only cancel, transfer, edit reservations via phone. That's it. Sorry, guys. What is the best way to catch red grouper? Best way to catch red grouper is to fish with Hubbard's Marina. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, best way to catch red grouper is to get out there right now, um, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday offshore, Thursday near shore. Um, and I would fish near shore, 70, 80, 90, 100 foot of water offshore. I'd fish 160, 200 foot of water. Uh, definitely targeting those areas of hard, flat bottom, potholes, smaller ledges, um, lighter relief, bait shows, be looking for those bait shows. I'd be fishing 60-pound fluorocarbon um, and six to seven hooks offshore. Near shore, I'd be fishing 40, 50-pound fluorocarbon, five, six-aught hooks, 
I'd be fishing a long strip of squid, either near shore or offshore, live pinfish, um, butterfly squirrel fish, live lizard fish, all good options for those red grouper. And um, smelly, slimy baits. Red grouper love smelly, slimy baits. Mike Seeger, appreciate those 200 stars, man. All right, what's our next question? Siri? <laughs> what's the biggest fish caught on one of y'all's boats? Uh, so uh, we have a ton of different uh, big, big fish. I think our biggest snapper was a 111-pound Kubera snapper. Uh, we've got five, six, seven hundred pound Goliath grouper. We've got um, 105 pound true black grouper. Um, our biggest recent gag grouper was like 57 pounds. Um, we've got some really, really big fish. Eight pound yellow tails, 12 pound mangrove snapper, uh, 22 pound hogfish, 23 pound hogfish. Uh, so we definitely have some really big fish caught, big, big sharks. Uh, I know one of our biggest sharks that I caught uh, on one of my shark trips was a 12-foot tiger. I'll never forget that thing. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. So we have a lot of big fish that we catch and harvest, a lot of big fish that we catch and release too. Also, we do have that new slow pitch jigging area in our shop if you haven't checked it out yet we've got a whole line of temple reef slow pitch and rods got a whole line of johnny's slow pitch jigs and johnny jigs uh, uh split rings assist hooks pliers jig pro is coming into the shop we ordered them just before the end of the year they should be showing up soon as well so we're going to have a full wall of nothing but slow pitch jigs, assist hooks, split rings, split ring pliers, jig bags. We've got all the slow pitch rods from Temple Reef. And we're bringing in a full line of Daiwa Saltiga and Daiwa Saltist high speed, single speed, small, narrow reels for those slow pitch rods too. So full line of slow pitch stuff. Uh, and our online store has it all. If you haven't seen that online store yet, uh, it's definitely popping and a lot of cool information there. Uh, we've got jigs, rods, reels, and uh, some really cool stuff on our online store. If you haven't checked it out yet, there is a ton of information there. Uh, plus, we've got apparel, sunglasses, uh, tons of other souvenirs and reels and other tackle besides just slow pitch stuff too. So if you haven't checked it out yet, shop.hubbardsmarina.com. Definitely go check out some of our hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, sunglasses. We got it all. If you haven't checked it out yet, you're missing out. The online store is popping, popping. Also, we are uh, taking signups. Uh, saw a question about our regulars club. We are doing our regulars club signups right on our website. If you go to fishing trips, scroll down, you'll see under fishing trips information, the regulars club. Under the info tab, there's regulars club information as well. We have a new regulars club website page. So if you haven't checked that out yet, there's a video there. All the prices and information are there. Uh, and Josh just dropped the link into our YouTube and Facebook live stream. So after the show, make sure you check that out as well. Regulars Club signups are open. You can sign up in person with me in the office, or you can call me and sign up over the phone, whatever's easier for you. All right. Also, on the slow pitch front, next week, uh, January 9th, we have the guys from Johnny Jigs joining us for tonight or for that live show. So January 9th, next week, guys from Johnny's Jigs will be on the show talking slow pitch jig fishing. So lots of cool information next week on the live show. Don't forget to tune in and join us. All right, what other questions? Are you still able to oh if you win, can you swap the ticket to someone else? So the, uh, when the free trips that we give away during the show are non-transferable 
and uh, they are a donation gift certificate. We're trying to do something positive, so we try to keep it really easy and simple for everybody, and uh, it is non-transferable, and you cannot sell it. Um, but we work with people. I mean, if you win it, you want to give it to your dad or your brother or something. There's certain situations we can accommodate, and we'll work with you. But you can't, like, win a free trip and sell it on Craigslist. That's not how this works. <laughs> it's not what this is intended to do. Tim Dykes, appreciate those stars. And uh, D Beers, the cost of the Regulars Club membership and all the Regulars Club information is right there on our Regulars Club page. So go to hubbardsmarina.com, click info, click Regulars Club, or click Fish and Trips, Fish and Trip information, and Regulars Club. There's a bunch of different ways to find it right on our website. And the prices are there, plus the information, plus a video describing it more too. Basically, it's a loyalty program. The more often you fish the more it makes sense for you to join the Regulars Club. So if you fish once a month, twice a month, you really should be a part of the Regulars Club. You pay a little bit of money to join, you get big discounts on the trips, and then it offsets each other if you go fishing a lot. So the more often you go fishing, the more it makes sense to become a Regulars Club member. It's not a discount program. It's not a, oh, they're a regular, they have different rules, or we bend the rules for them. No, same rule applies to everybody as a regular, even you're held to an even higher standard, really, because you're expected to know the rules because you go a lot. Um, so it's nothing like that, but it is a way for you to go fishing more often, more affordably. That's what it's all about, is making it easier for you to access, spending a day out in the water and enjoying our beautiful Florida fishery even more often at a cheaper rate. Uh, let's see here. Thanks for sponsoring the Christmas party. Yeah, we were, uh, we were giving away a bunch of free stuff around Christmas. We're very Christmas spirited this year. So glad you got something for your Christmas party. Would a naked ball jig be good for a 39 hour trip? If the trip has a lighter load, in my opinion, no. I mean, I would use those naked ball jigs near shore for hogfish. Me personally, those larger naked ball jigs, like the four, six, eight ounce ones, I haven't used them, nor would I really try to use them because that to me is more of like a red grouper jig where you cast out away from the boat and you kind of bounce it back to the boat with a long strip of squid looking for those red grouper. That might work if you're using like a bucktail jig or a naked ball jig out there and 200 foot of water, you might even get a scamp with it. But if I was going to jig offshore in deeper water, I'd use a diamond jig or a slow pitch jig, uh, some type of vertical jig that's going to give me a variety of options of fish to catch besides just bottom oriented species that would be scared by that six ounce ball jig, in my opinion. But who knows? Someone could prove me wrong, but I, I haven't seen them used with great success offshore and deep water. Will slow pitch jig fishing versus traditional bait fishing be at odds on party boats? Yes and no. Um, most party boats that have slow pitch jig fishing, uh, the people that are into slow pitch jig fishing are pretty experienced anglers. I mean, to me, there's like an evolution of anglers. You learn about fishing you try fishing, you start near shore on a shorter trip, you make sure you don't get seasick, you don't have any tackle, you're using boat rods or your buddy's rods, then you invest a little bit of money and get yourself a rod, you might try a, a 10 hour trip or a, a little bit longer charter trip and then all of a sudden you're fishing deeper and you're like this is really cool, now you're investing uh, 500, 1000 dollars into buying more tackle, now you're fishing deeper on longer trips. You're like, this is awesome. And then all of a sudden you're doing multi-day trips and you've got $2,000 of tackle and all this stuff that you've invested in and you're doing a bunch of fishing. And then all of a sudden you're like, all right, I've figured this out. I've mastered this. What's this slow pitch jig fishing thing? This is new. Let's check this out. And then you're investing another two, $3,000 into learning a whole different side of the fishery. Um, and, to me, I don't meet a lot of people that are heavily invested into slow pitch jig fishing that have a bunch of slow pitch jig rods and slow pitch jig reels and tackle boxes full of slow pitch jigs that 
aren't experienced anglers. They are typically very experienced anglers that have kind of gone through that evolution already and already have all that bait fishing tackle and have chosen to use this slow pitch jig stuff because either they like it a lot or they're trying to learn it or it's just something new for them to kind of reinvigorate their joy of fishing or, or, or learning a new thing. And that's kind of how what intrigues me about it is I just want to learn something new and try something different. So they're more experienced in that regard. So it doesn't conflict with bait fishermen because they're not going to risk their $200 in braid and their, their $400 rod and their $40 jig getting tangled up with uh, people that are bait fishing. So typically slow pitch jig fishing uh, is done at the very start of a spot or the very end of a spot if you're anchor fishing. And our boats mostly anchor fish because we're catering to the general public and the, the masses that generally bait fish. So we anchor fish primarily. If you go out on a slow pitch jigging trip, primarily you're drift fishing, you're not anchor fishing because it allows you to hit more spots and and move around more quickly and stay on top of your jigs a little better and cover more area. It's similar to fishing the flats. If you're fishing the flats and you're fishing live bait, generally you're either putting your power pole down or putting an anchor out and you're casting out a live bait. Or you put your power pole or your uh, trolling motor down and you're using your trolling motor and you're throwing a jig and you're covering that whole flat with your artificial jig. Same thing offshore. You're slow pitch jig fishing, you're using, you're drifting. You're covering that whole area, that whole ledge, that whole peak, or you're anchor fishing and you're dropping your live bait and dead bait to a specific spot on that ledge or that peak. Same thing. It's pretty interesting. And that's what it intrigues us and uh, why we're trying something, something new. We have that slow pitch jig fishing trip coming up January 11th, where this Total newbie is going out there to uh, try some slow pitch jig fishing. So I'm, I'm excited about it personally, just to try something new. And uh, I've been trying, been trying to, uh, I was going to go this Wednesday, but I have a fisheries meeting that came up. Uh, been trying to get my son. My son and I have been fishing a lot. Just haven't had the opportunity to take him out on the boat. Uh, for a deeper water trip yet and I was going to do that Wednesday but forgot I have a refish advisory panel meeting uh, that I am uh, unfortunately committed to but uh, definitely excited because I'm going to take him out there and fish deeper water with him Uh, he's a little more than two years old so he's ready Uh, and get him on the bait fish and have him uh, fishing with squid and I'm going to try some of these micro slow pitch jigs that I know are going to be working really well. And I'm excited to try it out in shallow water. So trying something different already. All right, let's see what other questions do we have. Do you like the saltest 40 for grouper fishing? And what's the use for high or low speed reels? So uh, originally, prior to two speed reels, you could either go high gear ratio or low gear ratio. The higher the gear ratio, the quicker the speed, but the lower the power. So basically, if you have a high gear ratio reel, it's like having your car in the highest gear, five, fifth or sixth gear. You can have a lot of top end speed, but you don't have a lot of torque. Whereas having a low gear ratio reel is being like in first or second gear. Got a lot of torque, but not a lot of high end speed. So the lower gear ratio has more power, less speed. And the higher the gear ratio, the more speed you have, but the lower the power. So... A high-speed reel is really good to set the hook quickly on snapper species and smaller fish and to get fish up off the bottom quickly and to the boat quicker and to work a jig. High-speed gear ratio is better. So snapper fish and mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, gray snapper, white grunts, uh, porgies, uh, deeper water, high-speed gear ratios are better. For amberjack, big gag grouper, you want a lower speed gear ratio or red snapper, kind of a medium gear ratio. So that's why two speed reels are so great because it's like two reels in one. You have the option to hook the fish in high gear ratio. And then if it's a big boy who's dogging you, hit a button and now you've switched gears to a lower gear ratio or essentially downshifted your engine back to first gear. 
So the Saltist 40 would be a great two-speed reel to start with. Would be great for a red snapper and even some smaller gag grouper. But the Saltist 50 has 35 pounds of drag. And that's a little light for a, a decent-sized gag in the 50. The 40 has less drag. So I really wouldn't recommend the Saltist 40 two-speed even low gear ratio to target grouper. If you're going to drop down a big live bait, I would probably use a six aught single speed low gear ratio or a nine aught single speed low gear ratio or a two speed with at least 40 pounds of drag like the Saltiga. Really 40, 45 pounds of drag in a four to one, three to one gear ratio is what you're looking for if you're targeting a bigger grouper. 40 pounds or better, 45 pounds or better drag-wise, four, 4 to 1 or lower gear ratio-wise is what you're looking for in a reel for bigger deep water group, gag grouper, amberjack, fish that are going to rock you up. Uh, red snapper, your average size gag grouper, red grouper, you can get away with a medium to even a higher speed gear ratio, like 4 to 1, 5 to 1, even 6 to 1, 30, 35, 40 pounds of drag, plenty. Mangrove snapper, 20 pounds of drag is all you need. And you can use 5 to 1, 6 to 1, even 6.2 to 1. They make some, like, hyperspeed reels that are, like, 7 to 1. I don't like those. It's, it's even 6.2 to 1, in my opinion, it's a little too fast, especially if you're using it with braid. You can pull the hooks away from the fish too quickly. So you got to be careful there, and it takes, there's a learning curve. If you go from a single gear ratio, kind of lower, three, four to one, all the way to 6.2 to one, you're going to miss some fish, especially if you go from mono to braid, you're going to miss some fish because you're all of a sudden pulling away from them a lot quicker. There's a big learning curve, so don't, don't go from a, a, a single speed, lower gear ratio to a high speed reel with braid. Because you're going to just, it's too big of a learning curve. Like, if you're going to switch from mono to braid, do it on the same reel so you get the hang of it. And then maybe switch different reels. And really, in my opinion, stick with mono. There's no really reason to use braid unless you're a vertical jigging, slow pitch jigging, uh, fishing really deep water beyond 300 foot of water. If you're using a good rod and reel, uh, your, your rod should always be a bigger investment. If you're using like a bull bay rod like one of those custom hubbards marina bull bay rods mono is great you're going to feel the bite you don't you don't need uh braided line to feel the bite scraps appreciate those 490 stars man thanks buddy uh let's see what other questions do we have here josh what's the secret to catching snook in the past during winter months persistence Persistence is key. So our good buddy, uh, John uh, Sasser, John Sasser, he is out there every morning with his buddies, at, pretty much every morning, at least five days a week he's out there, like 2, 3 a.m. until sunrise and past sunrise, uh, and he grinds it out. And there's weeks where he'll send me 30 photos of Snook. There's some weeks where he sends me nothing. I didn't catch any this week. So he works hard for them fish, but he catches them, and it's persistence. He, he knows when they're moving, where they're moving to. He bounces around between different spots, but he primarily fishes John's Pass. So in order to catch them, you just got to try different areas and be persistent and consistent and learn those patterns. Right now in John's Pass, in the wintertime to catch snook, I would tell you, don't fish John's Pass. I would go to the back bays. And during the day, try to hit those salooners in those areas where I know tide is flushing bait off a flat to the tip of a canal, a residential canal. And I'd hit a big dock. Uh, I, I know of a couple docks that I learned about growing up fishing on my little skiff that were adjacent to big grass flats. And the, the tide pushes all that bait over the flat and off the flat to this corner where there's a big residential canal dock. Holds a lot of snook. And there's a couple of them in the area. And nowadays, with Google Maps, you don't even have to get out in your boat. Just go to Google Maps, go to Satellite View, and look. Look around. Scroll around in Satellite View, and you'll see the flats. You'll see the oyster bars. 
and you can picture where the tide's flushing that bait across that flat. And where is it pushing to on an outbound tide? If tide's rushing across this flat, and then there's this residential canal finger sticking out, and there's this big dock at the tip of that finger, all that bait's flushing right at that dock. And there's going to be snook there, there's going to be redfish there, trout, flounder, maybe even sheepshead, all chilling under that dock waiting for that bait to come to them. Snook are opportunistic feeders. They're super smart, and they're going to expel the least amount of energy possible when they're feeding. So they're waiting for that bait to come to them. So you got to think like a fish. you got to be outsmarting the fish. You're the hunter, hunter above the water, looking for the hunters below the water. you got to be smarter. All right, let's find out who won a 10-hour all-day for two guests. That is a $238 value at $119 for 2022. Let's see who won a 10-hour all-day for two guests. 10-hour all-day for two guests. Let's see. Terry Eakins caught a couple fire trucks this weekend, and they are open January those red grouper reopen, so hopefully you can get out there and catch some more of them when they are open. And uh, we're excited about that. Red grouper reopen, lane snapper reopen, lots of fish to get out there and catch. Remember, Terry Eakins, you only got five minutes to claim that free trip. You got to text us at that phone number right there within five minutes to claim that free trip. All right. Let's see here. What other questions do we have, Josh? What's your go-to bait tackle setup for snook fishing at night? Um, well, it depends on where you're targeting snook. If you're targeting snook in the, in the lights of the bridge of the docks this time of year, I'd be using a DOA shrimp personally, like a, and you're matching the color of the lure to the water. So if it's really clear water, I'd be using like a translucent or clear colored DOA shrimp. If it's really muddy water behind a front, I'd be using like a root beer colored shrimp. Uh, if it's kind of like middle of the road, I'd be using like that red flake or that, that chartreuse. You're matching the color of the lure to the water. Lure colors are made to catch you walking down the aisle at Gator Gyms. Uh, and looking at lures. The lure colors are made to catch you walking down the aisle. You want to use the natural colored lure, and you want to present it naturally. The most natural colors are transitional colors, so something that matches the water color. So if it's really muddy, those whites work really well, those root beers, those things that create that transition, not those, like, neon green, purple, flake, striped, redhead pink body lures it's something that's more natural kind of more bland uh, those are what works and don't ever sleep on the redhead white body that always seems to work even though it's not that natural <laughs> i don't know what it is about that color pattern but definitely any lure redhead white body is always a good one but generally whites clears silvers reds chartreuse, root beers, those are the colors I go with. So that way you can match almost any water color you run into. What were you saying, Josh? Something about them redheads. <laughs> we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, when will you start booking 39-hour trips for Red Snapper this upcoming season? We started uh, November 30th, our season, our scheduled open for 2022. So are missing out if you have not booked your red snapper trips already they're already filling up so uh, if you have not booked 2022 red snapper trips do so like now because they are already filling up very quickly uh, the red snapper season should open june 1st and i would guess that it's probably going to run until the first or second weekend in august i would imagine we'd have at least 62 but i would I would bet and feel pretty confident that we'd have almost 70 red snapper days next year. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out for sure later. But if you wait to find out for sure, you're not going to have a spot. It's going to be full uh, because those trips fill up extremely quickly. All right. Any other questions, Josh? I 
That's fine. If we don't have any other questions, we can answer those. We'll, we'll fake our way through inshore stuff. I know a little bit about inshore. I'm not an inshore expert by any means. But uh, what one of my goals for 2022 is definitely to have more guests on the show. Uh, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to beg Captain Mike Anderson to join us one of these nights. Uh, next week, we've got the guys from um, uh, Johnny's Jigs. I'm going to try to get our good friend Captain Steve Pappen in here one of these nights. I called him on the way here tonight. Of course, he dodges, dodges my calls because he knows that I'm trying to get him to do something he doesn't want to do. <laughs> but uh, I'm definitely going to try to get more guests in the studio with us uh, this coming year, even people who are not affiliated with Hubbard's Marina. Try to keep the show fresh for y'all. So, yeah, I mean, we had Jammin the other day. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, had Jammin awesome. Green last week or last two episode. Yeah. Uh, two uh, two weeks ago, talking slow pitch jigging. So, kind of setting the tone for this coming year. I want to try to keep it fresh. We'll have a couple episodes where it's me answering your questions and focused on your questions and trying to rip through things as fast as we can. And then we'll have some episodes where we have guests. We're not getting to as many of your questions, and we're kind of focused on these topics. We're going to try to keep it fresh for you guys and uh, shake it up a little bit as well because once you guys do enjoy it, want to get a lot of good information out there. And me sitting here by myself every week doesn't really do that because we tend to talk about the same things often, and I want to make sure that uh, I enjoy the show and – I'm going to enjoy the show learning with you guys. So bringing people in, talking inshore fishing, slow pitch jig fishing. What I really want to try to do is I personally want to plan a trip to go down south and do one of those exotic trips for like peacock bass and all, all those crazy uh, knife fish, clown knife fish. There's a bunch of exotic invasive species down south Florida, and I want to meet one of those guides and get them to join the show too. So we're going to – we're going to do some more cool stuff like that in 2022 and an ex excuse for me to go fishing more. So definitely looking forward to that. My next trip is going to be that slow pitch jigging trip. And then I'm going to try to get out at least a couple more times. January is my birthday month. So it's a good excuse. Like, honey, my birthday this month, I got to go fishing. Careful. Your wife was watching earlier. She was. I saw her comment. My wife? Uh-huh. She doesn't have Facebook. I don't know. Somebody commented with a bunch of hearts. Uh oh. Everybody watch out. <laughs> it was about you doing yoga. To watch me. <laughs> it's about you doing yoga. <laughs> oh yeah. I believe it. I believe it. She in enjoyed me uh attempting yo uh yoga a little too much. Any other questions? What's your birthday discount? My birthday is July thirtieth. Do I get a discount during red snapper season? Uh, we are still doing birthday trips for now. Uh, very, very seriously considering pulling birthday trips. I think, I think if I get one more person, I'm gonna just pull them away and cancel a birthday trip because, like, I'm so sick and tired of like trying to do something positive. Like, like these free trips. We give away free trips during the show. Like, here's a free trip, two hundred thirty dollar, four hundred and five hundred dollar value trips. Give away $700 in free trips every week. And you'll get people that are like, oh, I want a free trip. The certificate expired eight months ago, but can I use it? And it's like, well, it expired, right? Like, we give it away. Is, is, is there any way, like, like, I mean, it's expired. And then they instantly get mad and start yelling and screaming and threatening bad reviews, and it's like, Dude, like trying to do something positive turns negative. And the same thing with the birthday trip. Like we're giving away free trips on your actual birthday. You just got to bring someone with you, pays full price. You get to go free, bring a copy of your ID. You're good. Happy birthday, free trip. People are like, well, my birthday is next week, but I want to go fishing today. Mm -hmm. And on my actual birthday, there's not a 10-hour trip. And I want to go on a 10-hour trip today for free. My birthday is next week. It's like, dude, that's not the policy. Read the policy. It's on the website. No, 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 no. I'm going today. <laughs> I mean, we even put I just we try to do these th positive things, and a couple negative Nancys, bad apples, love to ruin it for everybody else. And I'm I'm really trying to stay strong and fight the good fight to keep the birthday trip around. And uh, I'm struggling right now. I'm being uh, outnumbered trying to get rid of the birthday trip, but it's still there for now. 
Make sure you read the policies, follow the policies. If, if the trip you want doesn't fall on your birthday this year, maybe it does next year. It's a birthday trip. It's, it's, if it doesn't work this year, it will work next year or the year after, you know? Take a free trip on your birthday. All right, it's not the trip you want, but it's free. What are you complaining about? We're going to charge you double if you show up on a Tuesday and your birthday's on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pay us to go fishing on your birthday is what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and that's what really makes me so upset about society in general. It's like one person being crazy ruins it for everybody else. I really try really hard at Hubbard's Marina to deal with the crazies and tell them, hey, sorry. But what, what hurts is when they leave reviews because reviews really hurt. So if you are happy, you enjoy your visits, leave positive reviews to outweigh these negative Nancys, and we can keep ignoring them. Because, like... <laughs> What kills me is, like, we have, like, I think now we're upwards of, like, almost 9,000, Josh. Like, uh, literally over 9,000 positive four- and five-star reviews. And you have, like, I think we have less than 100 one-star reviews. And I have people to this day call me, and they're asking about, asking questions about one star reviews. And I know it's one star reviews because I know those 75, 85, 90 one star reviews we have, I know them line by line, word for word. They stick with me. And what's uh, even and crazy? They motivate me to be better. And, uh, and I, I, it cracks me up. Like at least once a month, if not more, we'll have someone call asking questions like, Based on the one-star reviews, obviously they only watched the one-star reviews and only read the one-star reviews. I was like, and I always start the conversation the same. I was like, so you skipped past the 8,000, 9,000, four- and five-star reviews. We're, we're going to talk today about those 75 or 85 one-star reviews, right? Just to make sure we're on the same page. And if that doesn't turn them around immediately, I'm like, all right, this probably isn't going to work for you. <laughs> I'll point them to the other the other party boats in the area or the other charter boats in the area because it's like if you're going to focus on the negativity in life and you go to a family business that's been around for nearly 100 years with almost 10,000 four- and five-star reviews and you're focused on the less than 100 one-star reviews, you're not the type of person we want to come join us anyway. It would probably be a bad experience for everybody. And, you got to be positive. And if you have a bad or bad time out on the water, come talk to somebody before you leave. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is we guarantee an excellent client experience with superior guest service. And I believe that our team, our Hubbard's Marina family, is the reason that we have so, such good reviews and so many positive reviews is we work so hard to make sure you have a good experience. And we personally stand behind them. I personally stand behind them. That's why I'm there prior to every 39-hour trip and on the return of every 39-hour trip. You spend more than $350 with us, I'm there when you leave, and I'm there when you get back to make sure you have a good experience. And I try to be there uh, prior to every 5- and 10-hour trip, uh, or every 10-hour trip, and uh, try to talk to everybody as much as I can. The 12-hour stream trips are a little bit trickier, um, and the 12-hour night trips don't really jive with my radio uh, schedule. So don't get to see them, but really try to be there as much as I can to do just that, stand behind our personal guarantee, my personal guarantee, uh, that we, we want to make sure you have a five-star experience. And if you don't, talk to me about it. We'll try our best to rectify it within reason. <laughs> Just let us know what we did wrong so that way next time you come yeah. out, we can make sure that it's fixed. We always want to improve. We're always learning. The day you stop learning is the day you die. Strongly believe that. Let's see, what other questions do we have? I'm going on a 44-hour trip in January, and I always wanted to catch a wahoo or a tuna. Um, so if you wanted to catch a wahoo, I would use a Nomad DTX Minnow Dark purple, blues, blacks, uh, or a Nomad Mad Max. Again, purples, blacks, those darker purple, blues, blacks, good coloration patterns. Nomad Mad Max, Nomad DTX Minnows, definitely Wahoo candy. Tuna uh, will bite those same lures, but tuna like the Nomad DTX, the Rapala X-Wraps, 
Uh, Tuna really liked that redhead white body, and so do Wahoo. And uh, Tuna liked kind of the mahi color, uh, mahi, mahi coloration pattern, those brighter colors. Uh, Wahoo's more of the darker color. So you kind of got to choose. I would personally go darker color this time of year. You still have a chance for a tuna. You got a better chance for a Wahoo. And uh, let's face it, missing a 20-pound tuna is frustrating, but the opportunity to catch that 50, 60, 70-pound Wahoo, much more exciting. So I would use the dark purples, dark purple blacks, blues, even some pink in there. The pink, pink with the dark purple stripes and the black body or black back is uh, one of our customers. Uh, Craig Hammock has caught like, I think, four Wahoo on that. I think it's like a hot pink, dark purple, blackish mix. Um, that's a Nomad Mad Max, Mad Mac lure. And we carry those in our shop. They're also on our online store, or you can get them at Gator Gyms, Dogfish Tackle, Bass Pro uh, on your way to see us. Uh, any other questions, Josh? I think we got time for one more before we wrap it up. Can I catch red snapper from the shore? No, not yet. They get more and more prolific. What do African pompano hit best? Uh, generally deeper water past 140 foot of water on a spring or artificial wreck. Typically 20, 30, 40 feet off the bottom. I catch them with a mangrove snapper setup. Drop down to the bottom, reel up 10 cranks. Stop on a cut thread fin, double snell rig, just like you're rigging for mangrove snapper. If I, if I know we're stopping on a spring or a big wreck in deep water, I always drop down, hit the bottom, fish for mangroves for a little bit. But at some point during the stop, I'll drop down, hit the bottom, reel up 10 cranks, and stop. And that's where you catch the African pompano. Or the slow pitch jig fisherman, vertical jig fisherman will catch them too. How does the communal bait well work out on the day trip? So on our 39 and 44 hour trips, you have individual live wells, personal live wells on our 10 hour trips, 12 hour extreme trips, 12 hour night snapper trips. You have communal live wells on the pinfish. And uh, we have done that for decades without incidents. Uh, and it works out really, really well. You buy a dozen, you take a dozen out. We always seem to have surplus. We never really run into issues. Uh, so you bought them, take them out. You only take out what you purchased, and it's worked out really, really well. But, yeah, we mix them all up in a communal live well on a 12-hour stream, 12-hour night, 10-hour day, 39 and 44 hours, you have your own personal live well. All right, with that, we are going to wrap this sucker up. Don't forget, if you're one of our supporters, we have our supporters after show starting at 9.50, 9.50, supporters after show. Hopefully, you can join us for that. Uh, also, don't forget, lighter loads right now, January, less people around. Thursday is the best day to go on a 10-hour. Five hours look good Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday's 12-hour extreme. Don't sleep on that. Um, radio show this Saturday morning. Finally back to our Saturday morning radio shows. Excited about that. This live show is every Sunday night right here, 8.30 p.m. Hopefully you enjoyed it tonight. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Also, don't forget Gator Gyms brought you this live show. They bring you every live show. They make it possible. Gator Gyms Tackle uh, right there at 3301 Pinellas Point Drive South in St. Pete. Check them out. Tell them Hubbard's Marina sent you. They'll give you a free gift if you bring a youth angler with you. Also, thank you to our other sponsors and partners, our partners over at The Real Animals, our sponsors at Yamaha, Bass Pro Shops, Ingle Coolers, Salt Strong, Aquatic Nutrition, Sport Fishing Chums, Cleanse Oil, and Bull Bay Rods. Don't forget to check out Hubbard's Marine on TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Don't forget to follow us, like our pages, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you're a supporter, join us for that after show, 9.50 p.m. That's about 15 minutes from now uh, on the supporters private group page. You have time to become a supporter. If you want to, it's a great time, great opportunity to learn more and have more one-on-one -on -one connection. And... Um, with that, let's find out who won a 39-hour trip. That is a 
and $49 value for 2022. Let's see who won a 39-hour trip for one guest, 449-hour, $449 value. Kaylee Floyd, one of our supporters and one of our newest regulars club members. That's awesome. Congratulations, Kaylee. Appreciate you watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all soon at Hubbard's Marina. Don't forget, you're too busy to go fishing. You're just too darn busy. We look forward to seeing you soon out on the water at Hubbard's Marina inside Fish Famous John's Pass. Thank you so much for watching tonight, and thank you so much for being a part of our Hubbard's Marina family. We'll see you next week for another episode right here at 8.30 p.m. Thanks for watching.